Deep Dish Pizza is the story of Chicago. Pizza's a matter of pride in Chicago. Blue collar, broad shouldered, hearty Midwestern stock. You know, we have that Midwestern sensibility. But as much as we love the deep dish pie, very few know its tawdry history. Rick Ricardo starts it. I contend Rudy Melnati did. For while deep dish is the story of Chicago, the story of deep dish is uniquely its own. From recipe disputes. There's really no conflict. My father had the recipe for the pizza. To poaching cooks. They actually hide outside of Pizzeria Uno and they wait for Alice Mae Redmond. To straight up stab you in the bakery. And Ike Sewell said, you're not a partner. I'm sure that they made promises to her. My father-in-law didn't think he was gonna make it. So grab a slice of the deep stuff. We're about to weave a tale that'll have you rethinking a true Chicago original. We invented it. We perfected it, and it belongs to Chicago. Chicago's Best presents Piece of the Pie, the scandalous history of deep dish pizza. The story of what we call deep dish pizza starts because of a restaurateur, artist, merchant seaman, adagio dancer, you name it, he did it, known as Rick Ricardo. Chicago cultural historian Tim Samuelson, about to drop some knowledge. He lived in a post-Chicago fire residence at the corner of Wabash and Ohio. But in the basement of this old house was a bar, and it was a rough Place. The feds bust the bar. And so he takes over the old bar and makes this pizza that is very different from the traditional kind of pizza. Had Ricardo not created this pizza, the history of pizza would be entirely different. But thank the pizza gods he did, and thus concludes our telling of the history of deep dish pizza. Well, so as far as deep dish goes. Huh? Jonathan Porter from Chicago Pizza Tours with some alternative facts. Back in the 40s, a couple of partners got together on the near north side of Chicago at the corner of Ohio and Wabash. One was a guy named Ike Sewell, who was a former football player at the University of Texas, an all-American offensive lineman and then his buddy, a guy named Richard Navaretti, who was affectionately known as Rick Ricardo. Now, Ike being from Texas, he felt that Chicago didn't have any good Mexican food. Ike decided that what Chicago needed was a Mexican restaurant. Penny Pollock, dining editor at Chicago Magazine. So Rick enlists one of the guys who works in his kitchen, and Rick Ricardo, who had never tasted Mexican food in his life, got sick, totally hated it, and ended up disappearing from Chicago for two months. <laughs> Bet you're gonna tell me he went to Italy and was dazzled by the Neapolitan style. Said, listen, I've spent time in Italy. They got this stuff called pizza over there. It's gonna be dynamite here in Chicago. Nailed it! So the two of them are looking at each other like, all right, pizza it is. Uh, there's only one problem with that, and this happens a lot. You know, neither of them had any idea how to make pizza. Excuse me, what? I am totally mystified about stories that say that Rick Ricardo had no culinary experience. Oh, it's on now. He had an artist's sensibility and kind of a creativity and almost an irreverence, but he also had a food background. Rick showed Ike versions of what he had had in Italy, and, and Ike Sewell, being a big brawny Texan, said, oh, I need something much more hefty, and maybe we need a knife and fork. So they kept building the pizza to be bigger and thicker and brawnier, and that's how Deep Dish was born. But, like, Let's just imagine they couldn't cook. Fill us in, John. So what they do is they had to go out and find themselves a nice Italian guy by the name of Rudy Malnati Sr., an Italian immigrant. Malnati, you say? Now, up until then, pizza had been relatively small. Thin crust, more of an appetizer or a snack, as opposed to like a full-blown meal. And Ike being from Texas, he felt that wasn't good enough. So through his direction, Rudy Malnati Sr. helped create the deep dish pizza. I'm probably the only person that knows the real story other than my mother. Rudy Melnati Jr. 
There's really no conflict. My father had the recipe for the pizza. Rick had the building, which was 29 East Ohio, where the obviously Pizzeria Uno sits now. And Ike Sewell was brought in for basically what he could do with bringing liquor to the restaurants. So, on one side we have the Ricardo camp. It must have been Rick. Rick Ricardo starts it. On the other is the Malnati folks. Who better than an Italian immigrant? Am I right? I contend Rudy Malnati did. And then you can just start to add up the stories between you know what you hear over here and, and what you hear here. It starts to come together and give you a, a, an idea of what may have happened. Mm, does it though? What say we go to the source? Okay, sure. <laughs> April Gavin from the Pizzeria Uno. The stance of our history is shrouded in mystery because Ike wasn't a journaler, neither was Nova Eddy, so we don't really know what they were thinking or exactly those conversations. What we do know is that Nova Eddy was an Italian guy. He made food for a living. He had an Italian dough recipe. It turns out, though, that Ricardo Novaretti died before any other deep dish pizza place in the city, including our second restaurant, Pizzeria Due, was open. So it sort of became Ike's legacy. So what's the verdict? Last word, Penny. People are greedy. <laughs> They're terrible. No, <laughs> not if it's the truth. I find every version of this plausible because everybody wants the credit and everyone wants their name on it and everybody wants the fortune attached to it.